first talk because tomorrow I will have another talk about Leonardo da Vinci and mathematics. And that talk will be more uh, into the mathematical topics. But first, today, uh, I will do a talk which is a little bit more general about sinister models. Uh, this is my name, Dirk Heilbroek, and I'm from Belgium. Um, I also do a column called The Mathematical Tourist, and you will see that there's a link with what I will do today. Uh, so first, as the introduction, I wanted to go to a bakery shop here, and I asked the bakery, well, you always turn your pastries like this, you see, they turn like this, like this, and I went to the bakery shop and I asked him, can you give me one that turns in the opposite direction, not like this, but like that. And I said, well, I am a mathematician and I need uh, it to be turned in the other way. And bakeries, normally you have to know when you work in a bakery store, you have to wake up very early. So he looked at me and he advised me to go elsewhere. <laughs> and for instance, I went to the butcher and in the butcher shop I saw this sausage and I asked the butcher, can you give me a sausage that doesn't turn like this, but that turns the other way around? And I said, okay, I'm a mathematician. <laughs> can you? And the butcher looked at me and said, you want it to turn it the other way around? Well, he said, here it is. And he turned it upside down. This was actually a clear view. I also learned very quickly that it's better not to discuss too much in a butcher shop, because they, have, they are armed. Okay, let's do it. This is me, so to present myself. I will talk about left and right models. This is uh, my right part, you can check this. And this is my left part. If you glue them together, this is the right Hermelbrook and this is the left Hermelbrook. I also try to do this, and this is interesting if you do it yourself, because many people compare me to Brad Pitt. <laughs> and so you can do this with the right Brad Pitt or the left Brad Pitt. You can test it here. Normally, if I give a talk somewhere, I also try to do this, in, a, in any case, with a local politician, but it's always a bit dangerous, so I took Obama, and this is a uh, right Obama, this is the left Obama. You can try to, that looks a bit darker on the left. Uh, so you can try to do it left-right, and maybe you think, in the beginning, this might be funny, but uh, are there serious reasons to talk about that? Well, in arms, of course, you talk about sinister, what means the word sinister, why did I choose this type? Because in arms it means left with respect to right and sinister it means left hand and there's a nice trick from Rinus Rulofs to check out if you are left handed or right handed. Can you just cross your arms, just cross your arms and you will see that people do it differently. Left handed or right handed you put one arm up or one arm down, depending on the case if you're left-handed or right-handed. In case you just try to do it the other way, it feels weird. Uh, something else, another test that you can try to do, you can try to turn your leg this way, in one sense, for instance clockwise. You know these tests that you did when you were a child, like... Uh, like no, so well, this is even impossible, because like a child you can exercise, you can finally do it. But this is actually impossible. You do with your foot like this, and with your arm, you write the number six. Can you please try to just with this clockwise and here counterclockwise? And it will not, just try it, it will not work. So there is something in there, and maybe in the beginning you will find this a rather ridiculous question, but I will get more and more serious. Now this is an experiment that has been conducted I did. by a Belgian professor from the University of Ghent, who what his name is Professor Dirk Heilbrock, if you're interested. Yes. Uh, he so this was in the memorial when Dama was in Brussels. The other way around. These guys are all very good in this And we did it with members of the Olympic team of 400 meters. And what can you see? They run the opposite way. The presenter gives, describes me in one word. It was 46 point something seconds. I'm not quite sure what it proved, but it was, it was odd to look at. Just some mad professor from Ghent. I'm a star. Some mad professor from Ghent. It looks awkward. So it looks awkward if you do it any other way. And uh, this is what I try to show. Normally you see uh, runners like this, but they can, you can also try to see them in the other way. So there are indeed left-footed and right-footed runners. We did it for uh, 45,000 spectators. 
Now, the people in the stadium, when they were looking at it, for them it was strange, because normally you look like this in the stadium. And then suddenly you had to look the other way. And normally the Mexican wave always goes in one sense, they follow the runners. And here the Mexican wave had to go the other way. So people had to exercise in the Mexican wave. And then for the whole evening they did the Mexican wave in two directions in the stadium. This was a big success. And in fact, you can wonder who won. I will tell you, the winner was the youngest runner, was not the best runner. Because the best runner, in fact, was the one in black, was my student. This is one of the reasons why I did it. And he was only third, although he had the best time. But, the, but he couldn't win because he said, I was too much used of running like this, and then he had to run like that, and it was too difficult for him. I repeated this uh, this year, well, in 2013, in cycling. Cycling is very popular in Belgium. I know that people in Serbia can hardly imagine why cycling is so popular, but anyway, so they run, they cycle this way, but I made them run this way. So it was the first time, the first 500 meters clockwise. So we had a new world record. Of course we had a new world record, it was the first time it was done. Okay, so we had a new world record and they went this way, actually, the sponsors were very happy because normally here you read Otto, because they run like this, so you read Otto in this way, and that, now the sponsors, they were happy because you could read the sponsors as the runners, cyclists were going. At least these people were happy. Here you see uh, the events, the cyclists, and there you see somebody who does medicine uh, the, for the medical preparation, and this is the runner in the other way, the winner in the other way, 500 meters. Uh, for instance, if you see a cycling contest, you can see here this one has the right foot first. This one has the right foot first, but this one is a left-footed person, is it? Uh, yes, right is first, right is first, and this one has the left foot first. In, in bicycles, it's a problem when you jump on your bicycle, the gear is always on the same side, it's always on the right side, always. And this is a problem because in some mountain bike, uh, competitions you have to carry the bicycle on your neck on your back and then people who are left-handed who lift it up like this they have the gears in their back and so it's actually you could say this is bad because they get dirty but this is not the main problem for these people that they get dirty so it's not so bad uh, skaters have similar problems skaters you have seen these and uh, fast track they have injuries real injuries due to asymmetry because they always run like this. They all start with the leg right, the right leg behind, if you see that. So this is pure discrimination. It's discrimination of left-footed people. If you see people in athletics, if you see them start, if you would discriminate the left-footed people, you can cancel out all these runners. Because in contrast to being left-handed, left-handed is only 5% or 7% of the population. But in school, they learn you to use the right hand. The teacher will say, use the right hand. Eh? And so, but with the feet it's different. There are many more people who are left-footed than there are people who are left-handed. So this is discrimination. So this is why, one of the reasons why we did it. Uh, actually, in uh, Formula One, you have that in all these countries here, where they drive on the right, the, uh, the circuit here, the, the track, the track goes like this, and uh, it goes like that in these countries. Although, for instance, in Singapore, they drive on the right, on the left. So there's no logic you can find in there. Uh, this is just one example. In Japan, they have, for me, the ideal solution, because they have a track in an H shape. So here it's counterclockwise, there it's clockwise. So this, is, this makes sense. Actually, this is a proposal I had for athletics too. The only problem is that the runners who are behind would hit those who are ahead, but well, <laughs> we can solve this. Because here, for a car, there's no problem, because they have a little bridge or a tunnel. Uh, okay. So in Australia, for horses, uh, well, in Melbourne, they do it counterclockwise, and in Sydney, they do it clockwise. So actually, some people say that you can see it on the horse. Some people say that you can see that the hair of the horse goes like this or like that, depending on the fact that it's right-footed or left-footed. Uh, and so if you are a jockey, you can choose. If your horse is left-footed, you can go there, or if it's right-footed, you can go there. In, in, in horse riding, there's no discrimination, because you can choose the track. But in athletics, of course, this is not true. Okay, enough sports. 
Okay, this was meant to be a joke that the shoe is it. Okay, but this doesn't work. <coughs> uh, let's go to architecture. Some questions here. This uh, one turns to the left, and that one turns to the right. Left screw, right screw. Okay. Uh, this one, maybe we can have some participation from the audience. This one turns to the <laughs> and this one turns to the <laughs> okay yes left right let's do it better now uh, this one turns to the left and this one turns to the right okay uh, this one okay the audience maybe this one turns to the huh? and that one turns to the left and to the left okay this was a tricky question I'm sorry I'm so mean uh, here nicely symmetric. Here you find uh, in one sense and in another sense you find both. In the Vatican you find for instance columns where the spirals go to the left and spirals go to the right. It's very strange that in the Vatican you can find spirals that turn to the sinister way. Normally you do not turn to the sinister way, to the way of the devil. You don't, you don't expect this in the Vatican. But by symmetry you have it. Uh, so some people propose for buildings that some buildings should turn, and you can see this here, this building, uh, every floor turns like in a revolving restaurant, and um, in a revolving restaurant, normally um, what they do is in a revolving restaurant, they, you would expect that they would turn one turn for 24 hours, one turn in a day, but that's too slow. So normally they do one turn for a meal per meal. This also explains why there are no fast food restaurants in Aspire. Okay, this, this is the joke. In the Tokyo, there's a tower where the guy who operates the tower, he wakes up and he says, okay, today it's clockwise. Oh no, I'm in a bad mood. Counterclockwise. And they can set the speed there in that restaurant. That must be funny to work there. When he sees a lot of people, oh, a bit faster today. Okay. Uh, how did I come up with this? Well, actually, once I insist, assisted to a talk by David Avnir from the Hebrew Ju University of Jerusalem, Israel Prize of Chemistry, and uh, he talked about chirality, but in chemistry, and of course, chirality is an important question, because you can have uh, molecules that are very healthy in one configuration, but are poison in the other configuration, Although they contain exactly the same atoms, molecules, whatever, whatever, they are totally identical, but they are each other image. Like, for instance, the softenon uh, drug, that was a famous example, and they tried to find what was wrong. The only thing that was wrong is that they were each other's mirror image, and if you took the mirror image, you got children that were misformed. In mathematics, we know, we all explain, I think, one day or another, we explain the right-hand rule. Hmm? So, of course, this is important. Uh, in mathematics, uh, the vector of cross product is harder to teach than it looks. Normally we are used to it, but if you have to teach it, with A times B is uh, the vector product A times B. So if you have to teach it, it, you can use this rule, but it's not so easy. Because for instance, just to prove you that it's not so easy, in many textbooks, I think at least half of the textbooks that I know, uh, the proof of the fact that A vector product with B is minus b vector product of a is wrong. Check your textbook. Check your, the proof in your textbook of this property. What they will say in many textbooks, they will say that the proof is that the sign of b a is minus the sign of a b. And then they will say that the sign is of minus is minus the sign. OK, this is true. This is correct. And they will draw the conclusion from this from this minus sign that there should be a minus sign there. But in fact this is wrong. Why is this is wrong? Because the vector u should be, um, should be the opposite of the vector v. Because the vector u is always oriented, the first vector, the second, and then the third. If this is the first, then this is the second, then this is the third. So if you use this reasoning, it doesn't work. You have to say that the angle AB is between 0 and 180 degrees. I will not, not too many details, but check this in your textbook, because this is a very common error. And you ask this to teachers, and well, they don't really know, they don't really accept the, the mistake. Okay, we know this property. I got interested in this topic in, in algebra because of the word anti-commutativity. Of course, if you're young, 
if you're 17, 18 years old and you hear anti-commutativity, it strikes more than commutativity. Anti, rebel, okay, let's do this. So this is what I found interesting. Uh, of course, we can talk about Lie algebras, Lie brackets, and so on. It's serious business. So who's Lie, how and why? So it's serious business, but I will not go too much into the serious business details. But there's also a problem for mathematics education. Uh, for instance, 27, 27, we say 27 in English, but for instance in German, you say 27, you, you turn it up, you turn it in the mirror image. And when you have to make additions, when you have to work with these numbers, it's pretty difficult. Actually, when you do a multiplication, uh, in any independent of the language, you will always write your multiplication from the right to the left. This is actually an Arab heritage. And you even use a dot to symbolize the fact that you have to move like this. So you change the order here. So Umberto D'Ambrosio, Guerita D'Ambrosio, he said that, well, our numbers, there's a mix of left and right in our numbers. You can see it here. And we do not always realize it. But for instance, if like me, you have to mix the two languages, uh, then sometimes it's confusing. 83 and 38, and yet you don't know anymore. OK. Uh, so the importance in mathematics education of this I have almost never seen it, except for one exception, with this uh, professor, Art Kashmir, who teaches mathematics for the blind. And uh, in Braille, for instance, Braille is very linear. They always read from the left to the right on one line. Uh, they are now they start to make uh, um, surfaces with dots, but normally Braille, Braille is always linear. And so they cannot do long divisions. They cannot do multiplications. One under the other, they don't do that. So it is a problem in mathematics for the blind. And uh, well, you, maybe you can try to find other problems like this one. If you have the composition of functions, you have g after f, you write this. But perhaps you have already uh, had this as an example that you have to learn to your students that it's the opposite. That the second comes first, and the first comes second in this thing. So you have this kind of problem. But there's also, there are also some examples in uh, geometry. For instance, here we have uh, a Fuhrer dome. Actually, it was this German. I owe this to Dennis Nudge from Hungary. Uh, he told me that it was actually uh, Bauersfeld who constructed this dome. This is from Bauersfeld. This is from Fuhrer. And he constructed this in 27 before the American. But the Americans won the war, and so it's named after Buckminster Fuller and not after Bauersfeld. So, okay, this is how it goes. Of course, uh, Fuller also did much more uh, efforts to popularize the notion. So, let's admit he did a good work. But what is strange that in these domes, you will never see anybody talk about left and right Fuller domes, or domes, whatever. Look, here you have a pentagon. You go down, and then the pentagon is like this. Here you have a pentagon, you go down, and the pentagon points like there, left to the other side. So they are each other mirror image. I've never seen a left Buckminster Fuller Dome or a right Buckminster Fuller Dome in any book of architecture. And if I ask this question to my colleagues architects, because I teach in architecture, they say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it, but although this is very unpopular for architects, because if you are, ask any question to an architect, he will explain you why the ceiling is white, why this is uh, with little light. He can, they, normally they can explain everything for hours and hours, isn't it, colleague Leslie? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do you see the difference here between these two drawings here? It's the same thing. They look similar, but if you uh, look carefully, they are, here you have a hexagon, and there you go to the right, and then up. Here you have a hexagon, and there already is your next hexagon. They are each other's mirror image, and they're not identical. This was made by Radmila Sazdanovic, and here you see, in a hyperbolic plane, you see an example of such a mirror image. So this left-right issue also exists in hyperbolic planes. This is another thing by Venus Rulos. It's a dome, and it's based on this construction, but it's also left-right different. I know that I'm going fast here, but it's just a minor thing. I hope you will... I don't give you the time to check it out, but I hope you will believe me and check it out when you have the time. So I started to wonder why do they do, do this, and I asked Karl Vollers, who wrote a book about twist and build, and he, in this book, he discussed this feature, and um, he said the explanation, for instance, for Calatrava's twisting uh, torso here in Malmo, 
He said the explanation is the following. It, it's a torso, because a human body, if you hit the shoulder here, the human body will do this. Oh, I said to Carl Foros, just test me, hit me here. And then you turn, of course, the other side. So this doesn't make any, it's not an explanation. It's, to me, this is just, well, <laughs> Um, uh, perhaps Calatrava was inspired by this statue in Spain because I went to Valencia to check it out where he got this inspiration. There you have the same twist and uh, well, could be an explanation. And in Spain also they have in the hair a preferred direction. Okay, is this an explanation? I don't know. But you can go further back in time and Ben Hur in the movie uh, he goes this way already, like you now today do in the stadiums. And they say that the explanation is here, but I will have to limit my demonstration for obvious reasons. When they sit on the horse and the emperor is there, then they can hardly do like this to salute the emperor. Well, if you sit on your horse like that, you can hardly, you can more easily salute. Okay? You got it? So, uh, and this is why they would drive in this direction, to easily say uh, Heil to uh, the Emperor. But this is also a strange explanation, because if you go to the Middle Ages, and if you see these fights, with, there they cross their lances. You would expect that you sit on a horse, and you would say, eh, like this. No, they do it the opposite sense. So, it's hard to... This is a door handle for left-handed people, this is for right-handed people. Can you design, you are in the design field, a handle without discrimination. I will show you one. This is a handle without discrimination. So if you, eh, if you want to do that. In Alicante, in Spain, I saw that this was pretty interesting. This door turns to the, this one turns to the right, this one turns to the left, nicely symmetric. I said, okay, I found a good entrance here. But if you look then at the handles on the doors, then they are equal in the same direction. So, disappointing. Yeah. Okay. If we, some people say it's related to where we drive on the road, and there are all kinds of explanations where we drive to the road. Some people say that most people are right-handed, so this is why they had the sword in their right hand, and when they are uh, in the woods, then the uh, thieves, the attackers, the criminals would come out of the woods from this side, so you would walk this side, but then in the desert this doesn't work because there is no wood to hide in the so on. <laughs> So you always have to try, you can always find something against these arguments. You find so many arguments. So this is a garage. When you drive on this side, this is easier to go up. So if you drive down, this is easier to go down if you have to go in a garage and uh, uh, downstairs. Uh, of course, in the other side, this is Macau, eh, actually, where you have an exchanger for left and right driving people eh, between China and Macau. So this is an exchanger. Uh, of course, the garage should look different then, because uh, uh, this is actually maybe an idea, more ideal garage, more symmetric. Okay, more examples. Uh, for instance, on the on rivers, boat, boats follow the current, the, the side where there is the most current. So uh, and less when they go down, and less when they go up. So on the Rhine, the river Rhine, they switch in the curves. So can they go continuously from one side to another? Please try this on the highway. <clears throat> uh, but they do it with success. Uh, pilots in uh, an airplane sits on the left side, in a helicopter on the right side. I see the logic here. Uh, if you have a carousel, they turn this way in some countries and they turn that way in some countries. I think in America they turn this way, in Europe they turn that way, but sometimes they import one of these in other countries. And actually, some people uh, get sick on the bus on the train when they sit in the opposite direction. You know that some elderly people, they say, can I sit in this direction because the train goes in this direction? They don't want to sit this way, no? Yeah, but you are like, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, but it's the same thing with, the, with the, the turning orientation. So why are, is nobody complaining about this? Another explanation is, for stairs it's simple, because if you're right-handed, if you're on this stair, you will do like this, you will say, okay, I want to build a good castle, I will, my stair will go up like this, because then I can defend more easily from, against somebody who comes up the stairs, like this. <laughs> I'm actually fighting now, you see this demonstration? <laughs> okay, 
And this makes sense because there was a, a, a people in Scotland, the Kerr, and they were mostly left-handed. It was a left-handed family. And they built their stairs the other way around. You can still visit it for left. This must have been a shock for the attackers. <laughs> a left-handed castle. So if you want to build a stair, normally, there is a good and a right example. Because if you go up the stairs, you go up the stairs with your toes, no? And you go down on your heels. And if most people are right-handed, you should then, if you are right-handed, then this is correct, I hope. Let me see the answer first. Okay, good. Correct, this is correct, because you go up with your right hand on the tip of your feet, and you go down there, and still, when I ask this question to an architect, why does the stair go this way or that way, what do you answer, Leslie? You say, oh, I follow the flow. <laughs> so, and they, I even asked my dean, I even asked my dean, what is the reason? And, he has no... So my dean actually said it has something to do with the wind. Because in Flanders, they very often construct houses like this, because since we are near to the sea, we have many winds from southwest. 70% of the wind comes from the southwest. So this part of the roof is very low, so that the wind can go over it. And if you want to knock on the door, if you are a visitor, here you're out of the wind. So this is how houses are designed uh, in Flanders. Because in Flanders, most winds are southwest, and a hurricane turns like this on the northern hemisphere, and on the southern hemisphere, the opposite way. So I would expect that on the southern hemisphere, they would construct houses in the opposite sense. But that's not true. Uh, also, some people uh, say that if you let water drop in um, a hole, that it turns opposite in two in the two hemispheres, but actually, by the way, this is not true. This uh, is the water volume must be really big. It doesn't even work for a swim pool. It's perhaps it works for winds because there are huge volumes with the Coriolis force, but it does not work for water. You can test it out yourself. Okay, I found this a funny image. Okay, this is for you, Sunjita, an optical illusion here. Okay, thank you. Some people say, well, uh, windmills in Flanders. And I know most, in, almost everywhere in Europe, but I think in Ukraine is an exception, but I should check that. Uh, they always turn this way, always turn this way. And there's a reason for that. The reason is, I was told by somebody who does mechanics in the Netherlands, that a tree, when it grows, <coughs> this is demonstration material, a uh, tree, when it grows, it goes with the sun like this. It falls the sun a little bit, I'm exaggerating now. So when you put it then horizontal, the best way to turn is like this. Otherwise, it would go, would break up. So they will always make a windmill turn in this direction. And uh, you can see that, you can see that there, the tree. So when you put it horizontal, all traditional windmills turn like this. Um, but modern wind turbines, turbines, they turn the other way. This is also strange. Normally, if you construct something like the traditional way, you would think that they would respect the tradition. Except in Ireland, there are some turbines that turn the other way. But today, since 1980, uh, since uh, 1978, uh, they all turn in the opposite direction of the traditional windmills because of some agreement between the producers. Uh, also, there's another question. I just said that trees grow like this, but there are also trees that grow the other way. So what do you do then? So these explanations, I don't know <coughs> what it's worth. This is a drawing by Escher, day and night. And this windmill here, you can see here the windmill, it will turn like that. Of course he had a little problem because he had to do the opposite of this one, which turned correctly. So he had to use the mirror image. And by using the mirror image, you construct an, a wrong windmill. This is a windmill for dummies because it turns the other way. It turns the wrong way. Um, so. Um, this is, was a discovery by Rina Zulovs, but Rina Zulovs, in his meeting in Enschede, Bridges, he used this demonstration, and he also showed the windmill in the Netherlands. Now look carefully, I told this to Rina, so you know, look carefully at the windmill. Did you see it? It turns the, the wrong way. I will show it again. It turns the wrong way. It turns the wrong way, even the flags turn the wrong way, because it's very easily done electronically to make it turn the wrong way. 
Actually, this is in Brazil, and in Brazil they put a motor in the, this restaurant, and you can see it turns with the motor in the wrong way. It's pretty strange that people do not pay so much attention to it, especially for architects. Why would architects prefer one orientation to another? Horta, famous Belgian architect, he was inspired by nature, and so are many architects. Well, many plants turn in one direction. Like wine, do you know that there's left wine and right wine? There's wine that is made from left-turning grapes and right, uh, from right-turning grapes and left-turning grapes. And specialists, but I don't drink wine, but specialists tell me that it tastes differently. I don't know, some turns left and the others turns right, I don't know. So there are two types of wine. I also wonder, these plants, they grow clockwise, they grow counterclockwise. What would happen if these two plants reproduce themselves? I wonder, and I wonder even more about this, because you know that for the galaxies in space, there is a majority of galaxies that turns into one direction. So this gives a good question, if you are religious, was God right-handed? If you are not religious, it's also a good question. If there is no God, how comes that there is a majority of right-handed or left-handed turning galaxies? This was the philosophical moment of my talk. Okay, see, I'm going. But let's go down to earth. Uh, well, maybe the explanation is pretty easy. When you mix a cup of tea or coffee, well, you have to, in this case, Kipling, you have to learn to stir in one direction. Otherwise, it's the devil's direction. Here you see the same direction in spaghetti or what is it, torbettini or something, whatever, and a lamp. So maybe the explanation is straightforward. When an architect is right-handed, he draws for a designer, because here you teach design too at BMU. When the designer is right-handed, he draws this circle like this, and he has this orientation. When a designer is left-handed, he will do it like that, and he will not think about it. So maybe this is a very easy explanation. But in fact, the conclusion is that nobody really knows. They pay attention to everything in architecture and design, isn't it? Eh? You pay attention to color, whatever, whatever, <coughs> but not to left, right. Although I gave examples that it's pretty important. So, um, it's important in geometry, but also in education. So, maybe it goes back from ancient times, because here you can see Asterix, which is my ancestor, and you can really see that he, but it's very quick, and you can really see that he runs the other way. Did you see it? He goes the other way. Here you have a still image. He comes this way. So, really, we don't know. Let's conclude that we do not really know. Some examples from Spain, where I gave this talk to, and some people reacted uh, by giving me some examples. This was an example from Spain. You have this example turning this way in the Colegio Teresiano, and you have this example in the La Ronja de la Seda. And you see it's the opposite. Uh, this is from Hungary. There are several people from Hungary here. You can see that the windmills turn this way, but there was this book uh, about windmills in Hungary, and I noticed that there was a windmill that turned the wrong way in this book. This book contains maybe 200 windmills, and one of them turned the wrong way. And I asked how it came, if it's really true, and they figured out that it was actually a mistake. The picture was turned upside down. But the thing is, well, why don't you notice it? Here, for instance, they're all counterclockwise, except this one. And here it's the correct image, and I asked, how comes that there it's the correct image and it's still wrong? Here it is because the restoration was wrong. The guy who restored it just put them wrong. Okay. Uh, so, um, another example from Hungary, Kosh Karoli. This is the drawing he made in his book. And this is the real building. You can see me there testing it. And uh, here, he likes to move to the right in all his drawings. He moves to the right. This seems to be a good example I have learned for designers and sports shops. If you want to sell Nikes, they should, you should put them in this direction in the shop. Because if you go in this direction, you have the impression that they run faster. Okay, this is uh, for women who like to buy shoes and so on. Okay, uh, Hungarian dance here, and this is something I tried to observe in Vlasina Lake when I was there too, in uh, Serbian dance. Uh, very often they start like this, and I wondered why, when will they start the other way? So, you, uh, some people say, 
some people say that in Vienna, the watts, the direction is preferably counterclockwise, and that from there it also came uh, it to be in the tango dancing. I don't know what is true. I gave this lecture also in Brazil. And please concentrate on the orientation. Concentrate. And you can see that some people like to turn automatically more in one direction and into another. Okay. So yesterday and two days ago, I went through Serbia and I couldn't really prepare it yet. For some reason, I had no time. But I introduced some pictures. Here you can see that they are symmetric, the spirals. They turn this way. Uh, so so uh, this way, and here too they turn this way. They are not symmetric, they are the same. And this is uh, pretty well, you can imagine why. I cannot imagine why. Here you see me showing two uh, designs, and the designs are not symmetric. They are uh, different there. So you can wonder why they don't put the same design. But if you go inside, you see that here inside for these two, they are symmetric. Outside it's not symmetric, but inside the building is symmetric. Some people give as an explanation, for instance in Firenze, at the Duomo, some people say that in the older parts they didn't pay attention to, to symmetry, but in the newer parts, yes. So some people say that it's a matter of uh, when it was built. But this doesn't make sense, because if you go to this monastery, you will see that here the plants, they are uh, moving in the same direction. I asked the, the nun or the priest or whoever, there was a nun, who was there, why do you cut your plants so that they both turn like that? Why don't you make them more symmetric? And they said that this was life. Okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Antwerp, a building, and you see it turns this direction. If you use a symmetric version, it's completely different. This is also in Flanders, I finished by my own region. And here you see it goes the other way. Uh, I have a little problem in Flanders because uh, one of the roundabouts, I found a roundabout near to Antwerp and there the roundabout goes the other way. So normally in a roundabout you go this way, no? And there's one roundabout in Flanders near to, on the highway to Antwerp which goes the wrong way. I found this pretty funny. I did a lot of things with the Minister of uh, Traffic in Belgium so that they would change the uh, orientation. Of course, the drivers from Great Britain are happy because they feel at home, but otherwise it's pretty... And it's for, for four, or four or five years I'm struggling to change this uh, plate. You see, you must have an ambition in life. Huh? <laughs> okay, so this is my current ambition. Actually, it's more than that. You know, flags, this is our Belgian flag. The Belgian flag is actually black, yellow, red. But when it's on an airplane, and the airplane goes this direction, of course, then they put the black part first to show that the airplane goes this direction, and that the flag follows the direction of the airplane. But they don't always do that. Here, for instance, this airplane would fly backwards. You see that? Black? Okay, but... Yeah, well. Uh, and um, some people say that if you move to this side, like with this flag, it shows more dynamism. It's more dynamic. So I went to the Army Museum in Brussels and I found this army truck where you can see that it's black, yellow, red. So it would drive reverse. I found this rather coward for some people in the army to put your army truck in reverse position already. But actually this truck was used for the UN mission in Rwanda where the Belgian army did do nothing else but going backwards. <coughs> Uh, conclusion, uh, perhaps you will like to clap, but if you want to clap, I would like to invite you to do something different. Normally, you clap like this, like this, if you're right-handed. Can you please give me a sinister applause, please? So, can you please not clap like this, but clap like that, please? Try that.